South Africa. South Africa? Hunter Valley. Oh, sorry, not Hunter Valley. Uh, West, uh, Margaret River. Margaret River. Uh, Maruchidor. <laughs> Not somewhere I'd guess. Uh, Queenland, baby! Yeah. With that tucked away in my pocket, welcome back to another week of Wine for the People. Uh, we're doing six blind wine tastings, myself, Noah and Brendan, and the idea is that we tell you how many bottles we'd like to buy, how much we think we would pay for it. And this week we're also trying to guess the region that it's from. Um, now, my offside of Lockie's given me a handy little tip, which is that uh, it's somewhere in Australia that you usually wouldn't guess. So, I don't know what the hell that means, but we'll find out. Uh, also, if you want to try these wines for yourself, we do have a little discount for you. Head down to the link in our description. They'll take you to the Different Drop website. Those guys hook us up with each of these wines. And if you use the code, you'll be able to get 10% off any of these to try it for yourself at home. But, without further ado, let's get into the wines for this week. Three wines, three reds, let's dig in. First wine, crystal clear, brilliant clarity, and slight, almost like, it's like almost close to green highlights. Like it's it's so borderline. Crystal clear white wine. <laughs> Not much else I can say. Just really clean, very refreshing looking white wine. Very little color. Um, pale lemon, lemon green kind of vibes. Yeah, Rizzo for sure. I've missed this. Rizza. It's just got that really sort of fresh cut grass, fresh flowers, grape juice thing going to it, which is synonymous with Riesling. Lucky, it spat at me. Great sort of length, very little astringency, amazing acid line, still not a lot of flavor. There's just not a lot there. Could be Sauvignon Blanc to be honest. Taut, linear, racy driven Riesling. Like great, that great stone fruit energy, all those kind of great bouquets of citrus. There's like orange peel, there's great lobs of lime juice and there's florals, there's mineral. It's so long and persistent. That talky lime powder. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 I like it, I like it a lot. So it's very much so like spritzy and citrusy, but then also sweet, but not like sweet to the point where you're like, I'm gonna hate myself for drinking this tomorrow because of all the sugar and it's gonna give me a hangover sort of thing. It's just cool, I really like it. You can't hate this wine, it's just so delicious. Yum, 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 yum. This is looking a little bit more promising. Darker amber, a little bit of opalescence here, so definitely no filtration going on, or if there is, exceptionally light filtration, but I don't think there's any here. There's some like nutty things, there's some like apricot, some like orange blossom. It's really quiet, I'm really not smelling all that much. It's, like, it's almost like a faint stink of reduction, but it's like nothing, but I'm not like immediately smelling it, so it's not really too concerning. Very similar to wine number one. What we do know so far of the first two wines is that they're pretty lean and they're not very generous in terms of flavor. This arguably is certainly a lot more, but of wines of this style, I just tend to expect a little bit more as well. And this is sort of, I wouldn't say under-delivered, perhaps this could be a style of the region which we're trying to guess. I mean, really lovely tannin profile. Really great structure, um, very savory, like, you know, on that kind of more yellow nectarine, white peach, orange aspect of flavor. Tastes okay, but I'm so off put by the nose. No. Um, dog droppings. Oh, I don't understand why someone would do that to me. I think it's like natty, it's not filtered. Genuinely awful to smell. Uh, here, I'd happily drop 30 bucks a bottle and I would buy, I'd buy two bottles. One, because I actually do want to see this with a significant amount of age. I think this would mature really interesting. And I think you're going to see a lot more flavor develop over time for this wine. The first wine, I'd give it to Henry. Skin contact, field blendy thing, but it smells, it, the, the, the smell's just prohibitive to me. Like I just wouldn't want to drink it because of how it smells. So I'll have one bottle. It's going to be that magic $38 for sure. All right, we're back. <laughs> Number three, white wine. This is out of the textbook. Very crystal clear, really kind of like neutral, you know, a little bit golder than the first wine, a little bit less gold than the second wine, um, but looks the goods. This is Chardonnay, well show. Um, it's just like this hot, rich, oaky uh, smell, which rare to find elsewhere. It smells like the Chardonnay that I might actually enjoy, to be honest, because it might have all this sort of like oaky, buttery, creamy stuff going on. Amazing, amazing, yes. And look, this could be, this could be pretty simple wine, to be honest, in comparison to the first two whites that are exceptionally muted. This here is just a breath of fresh air. Hmm. 
great acid, fruit profile is really well integrated, very seamless, oak is like well in there, very stylistic oak driven Chardonnay, but not overbearing. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's some, uh, that's like, I don't know. Sometimes I go down this path where I like taste a wine and I'm like, this is the sort of shit that Brendan and Noah are gonna be like, ah, oh, this is so well crafted and they've taken their time with it. And like the execution of what the winemaker wanted to achieve is just at a level that I really respect. I think that's what's going on here. But then again, you know that person that's just like, ah, oh, best film ever made? Avengers Endgame. I feel like sometimes with Chardonnay, I can get a little bit like marvel-y where I'm just like, whoa, CGI, whoa, Oak, whoa, Robert Downey Jr., whoa, buttery features. This is the best thing ever. Gonna drop 40 bucks a bottle, I'm gonna buy 12 just cause yums are cools. Cool green highlights here. So green highlights for Chardonnay that's actually, you know, got a really, really bright, tight acidity. Cooler climate region is speaking to me a little bit more here across these wines. <laughs> Number four, we're into the reds now. Now I'm trying to think about like where this could be. And the only thing that, uh, the only clue that I had was like, it's somewhere that you wouldn't usually guess. So I'm just like, Queenland. Queenland wine right now. Man, that tannin is very impressive. It really hits your palate. Not dissimilar to what Nebbiolo would, would give, which is that very, very firm attack, firm structure. Feeling a little bit Bordeaux-ish. Uh, it's got this freshness of fruit to it, like, you know, like bright red currants, black currant kind of thing. I've got a sultanery aspect, that butterscotchiness is there, like capsicum thing is there. It feels really ripe and integrated, but it's definitely that kind of like almost Bordeaux blend. Okay, uh, is this Bretty? I'm gonna write down Brett. Brett? With a big question mark, because, you know, we're, we're all learning here. I know I've only been doing this for three years, but. Uh, so like Cabernet driven Bordeaux blend. Um, and it's it's pretty good. Um, not something I generally lean towards. If it's three three bottles and I'm paying like 28 bucks, I'm like, that's a wintery thing. I'd love to play around this with like cooking and eating with certain meals. There's, su there's, there's such a great rustic charm to this wine, which I find really, really impressive. Oh, yum. Yeah, cool, quite enjoy that. Didn't think I was going to, but do, quite enjoy this a lot. I don't have anything interesting to say about it. Let the others talk. Um, I'll have uh, I'll have a dozen of them and give it to me for $37 a bottle, just under 38. Although that Britannomyces is a threat of maybe kicking up as well. What it does tell me if there's Britannomyces is that there's this pH is a little bit higher. Um, so it could be coming from, uh, it's a little bit antithesis of the white wines, which speak more cool climate. This one could come from a place that, you know, is slightly warmer. Number three, lighter, prettier, juicier. Very cool. Oh, it's got this like lovely little purple licks at the, at the end. Looks very refreshing. Drink that if you're thirsty. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. Tastes like bugger all. Um, super easy drinking. I'd chill it. I, I don't know, this is confirmation bias, but now I am like these are from Queensland because if it was hot and I wanted to drink red wine, I'd want something that basically tastes like water, you know? <laughs> Everything, everything about this wine is fantastic with one exception, it's that back palate, it's a bitterness. There's an astringency here. I was gonna say like, I love, I love everything about this wine. Very similar to what the, the previous red, just, oh man. A bit chewy, tannins are quite, quite fine and like, you know, really closed and really wraps everything up. Might need some time, but it's got, it's got some Grenache-y kind of energy. I'm gonna go Grenache. Yeah, yum. Uh, this is my favorite Marucci door wine that I've ever had, I reckon. Uh, Varietally, it's, Something in the middle there, like Grenache or Gamay or apparently matara -y after last week's debacle, but I'm gonna go with Grenache. That's really bitter. Uh, 35 bucks in one bottle. There's that, that's throwing me a little bit. It's almost like pithy. It's like grapefruit pithiness. I'm confused. I'm confused on region. Uh, yeah, no, I'll give, give me two bottles. I need to like, I need to give a bit of a think about this wine because it's got some finesse, but it's just not got flavor. Maybe it just needs time to open up. Maybe it needs time to age. I don't know. The tannins are really just a little bit too quite fine and grainy. Uh, 30 bucks. Uh, like, I don't want to pay too much for that, but I'll grab a couple of bottles just to like really think about and like, you know, chill out and settle on and see what happens. <laughs> Last wine, this one seems like an amalgam of the first two, dark, but I can see through it. Faded rim, uh, with a little bit of a tawny hue to it. So might be hinting at a little bit of Elevage. Quite light, so like immediately like, I'm thinking like Italian varieties, almost like Nebbiolo style. Very rich, very decadent. Yeah, definitely feels very savory, very, very old school, very kind of classical, like now we're talking real Bordeaux-y, like almost like very fine Cabernet. Um, yeah, it smells good. Sometimes you run out of ways to say leather, you know? Meh. 
I think potentially same variety because it's that same back palate bitterness. There's a lot of astringency on, on uh, some of these wines. Um, so tannin ripeness is full. That's a wine. That is a fucking, that is a fucking wine. Mm. The decadence, the richness, the like the sveltness of it. it doesn't feel overripe. It feels so classic. Oh yeah, you wouldn't pick that this was $12 a bottle because I'm buying it off a mate without him paying taxes. Not gonna say which mate, obviously, but um, it just tastes like generic, cheapish red wine. It's fine. I drink a lot of it. Uh, and so would that first wine would speak to me of Austria. I don't know where that third wine sits and that really kind of draws me away from that. I'm actually, uh, I'd say um, Tasmania, but there's no real Pinot here. It's just like velvet. It's just so seamless. It's beautiful. Now, the tannin profile really feels very Cabernet-like. It's just engulfing and rich and svelte and everything. It's not like it's not like Nebbiolo with its aggression and its like intensity. It's not like something like Syrah, which can feel like quite silty. It really feels very full, full and broad, but also so even. Cabernet. It's got that green stemmy thing, which like my dad told me four years ago that if you ever taste a wine with green stems, guess Cabernet. Ten percent of the time you'll be right and you'll look like a hero. So fingers crossed, this is gonna be that time. But yeah, see what the boys think. Oh, it's also definitely from Queensland. I've decided it's Maruchidor wine. That's what's going on. Something a little bit left field. I'm gonna go with South Africa. That's where I'm gonna go because I know South Africa can do some amazing sort of tannin ripe red wines. I know it can do some amazing Chardonnays in that style and it can indeed do some amazing uh, white varieties in some more muted styles. That's my sort of educational guess but let's see what the rest of the guys think. Brendan is a short king. Good to know there are more of us. <laughs> 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 oh, great. You're recording? Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, shout out to the comments. You guys shout are out. fucking awesome. Yeah. Bre <laughs> Bre Brendan's actually not short. Nora and I are just 6'5. Um, anyway, welcome back to, <laughs> welcome back to Wine for the People. Brendan's actually 6'1. Yeah. Welcome back to Wine for the People. We've got six more wines that we all tasted through, uh, yeah. and we were guessing the region or yes. where it's from. Yes. Yeah. Now, yeah. did you get any hints from Lockie? Or no, no, hints. no hints. No hints. hints. Get, did you get hints? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We yeah. said it was somewhere that you wouldn't usually guess. Right. Well, that's, oh. I'm, I'm glad because I guess Damn. kind of quite left field because I, I'll be honest, I, I didn't really enjoy like Ooh. these wines. I enjoyed, oh, wow. I enjoyed, uh, I, I probably enjoyed this more than the Mataru bracket that we did recently. I think there was some real standouts in here for me. Some were a bit just sort of like, yeah, this is a wine. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But I was, was like, I was wine. like 12 and 2. Like that was it. I was yeah, like, loved yeah, yeah, yeah. it, lo like yeah. real two-faced yeah. about it, like loved and hates. Oh, yeah, we yeah. revealed on the first one. Let's talk about that first one because I loved it. So did I. Yeah. Wow, I thought there was nothing to say about this first one. What? I didn't yeah. taste shit. What? You good? What? It's <laughs> like it's like white stone fruit acid. Like it's linear. It's driven. It's long. It's fucking awesome. It smells amazing. No. Sure, man. I was gonna spend 60 bucks and I wanted 12 of them. I was gonna say 25, I want this to be, oh, sorry, I said 29. Uh, I want this to be good value, I still want a dozen, love it. Predictions on the region before it gets revealed? All right, All right. South Africa. South Africa? Hunter Valley, oh, sorry, not Hunter Valley, uh, West, uh, Margarita, Margarita. Uh, Maruchidor. <laughs> <laughs> not somewhere I'd guess. Not somewhere I'd guess. <laughs> good stuff. Queenland, baby. Yeah. All right, I'm so, make one. Lucky. What do we got? How much was it, first of all? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Door, yeah, definitely wouldn't normally guess that. No, yeah, 100% sure. wouldn't normally. Watch it. Bang. Ready? Right? Search the sunny coast. Where's it from? Fermentino 2023 Fermentino. from Hunter, Hunter Valley. Valley. <laughs> Which Henry was closest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, In I was on the complete other coast. You want another another continent? Vermentino uh, from the Hunter Valley. I that's mean, I'm, I'm gonna say it. That's my favorite Vermentino that I've had uh, since the one that you made. But I love it. It's really cool. When did we make Vermentino? Petna. Uh, oh cool. yeah. Well, when it's when it's fizzy, it's great. Yeah. Um. You yeah, know, like like Hunter Valley does high acid whites really really well. Whether it be like Semillon particularly. It's like cheap. I'm a big fan of Semillon. Twenty nine bucks. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Blavin's good. It's like simple, fun, salty white wine. Just fucking get it in you. Yeah, I really like it. Um, <laughs> wine number two. This can go fuck itself. Yeah, I wasn't stoked on this one, eh? I was, I was pretty much exactly on the first one as well. No, <laughs> no. I was like, mm, uh, I thought that this was a skin contact version of the first wine. But what does it smell like, no? It smells like fucking, um, it's, like, it's, it does have reduction. It's not super bad, but it's like, unfortunately it's like not 
aromatic enough for the first thing you smell is reduction. Mm. It's really quiet. Like you're not smelling heaps, but it's like yeah, definitely a reduction. But it's also got that kind of like herbaceous green thing that's not very nice, the savouriness to it. Like I called skinsy sap. That sort of like pineapple skin, but really yeah. light on. Yeah, I, a... I called sem sap. Um, mm. Because I was like, it doesn't have that ridiculous Sauvignon Blanc, like screaming in your face mm. that it's fucking Sauvignon Blanc. It's a little bit more restrained. Um, thank God. We just imagine that amplified. Or some would yeah. say underripe. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is Hunter Valley. It's part and parcel. Yeah, no. Uh, all I got from it was it smelled like dog poo. Like that was yeah, genuinely really my really takeaway from it. Yeah. Uh, and then the flavor wise, it was fine. It kind of tasted like a little nutty. You really should have given away Hunter Valley, really. So yeah, really exactly. Now, now reduction. you look at it like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah. 30 bucks and two. Uh, 30 bucks and two. 38. Subby wubby. Subby wubby. Suji Semion. There you go, Semion. Sugi Semion. Semillion. Is Sugi a thing? Is Sugi, is Sugi a variety? Sugi Semion? I don't think Sugi's a variety. Soggy. If they have su if Soggy they, Semion? I mean, it's the Hunter Valley. It's humid as fuck, so it's Semion's it's generally soggy. pretty soggy. Um, yeah, no, look, I think uh, if you're talking about Semion from Hunter Valley, that is not what I would be buying. Cool, I've never seen the wine before. That's a that's a new one for me. Packaging is yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, super Great fun. packaging, super great fun. price too. Like, yeah. like there's so much going for it except the, the liquid. Um, unfortunately, no, not today, not, not waiting for us, but I mean, definitely someone I'm curious on in the future. One number three. One one up. Ooh. Yep, I'd, I'd agree. I'd agree with that too. I'm, I'm shocked, I loved it, but I thought it might have just been a bit too obvious for you guys. Uh, it was a Chardonnay, yeah? Yeah, yes. well, after the first two wines, I was craving something like this. <laughs> something and it was like awesome, cool. Win, winner. Total yeah, no, I was definitely into this one as far as the, uh, like, I think it's pretty obvious in its style. It's so oaky and yeah. quite rich, but it's like, I want it to be like this, particularly from Hunter. Like, I think that's what you want. Uh, it's rich, it's decadent, it's like, it's got that lovely kind of flinty reductive in a nice way. Like this, this is like next to each other. These are the two different kinds of reductions. This is the reduction you don't want. This is the reduction yeah. you do want. So yeah. Flinty, nutty. That's, that's cracking. Uh, I wanted 12 and 40 bucks. 12 and 60. 6 and 50. Mm. 35 bucks. I mean, that's fucking awesome value. That's like going up against some of the stuff that we see out of the hills. That's really good. Is it, a Chardonnay? Yeah. it is a Chardonnay. Good. Hey, what the boss. Awesome. Puppy yeah, Bottle. Wow. Uh, Usher Tinkler. Usher Tinkler. I love the name of that. Paper Wasp. Yeah. I love the, I love everything about this. This is in my top 10 already for the year. Start of the year, long year to go, but this is in my top 10 already. This is our 10th wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is there. Literally wine in number 18, top 10. Yeah. It's extra barrel aged. Ooh. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Couldn't sell Actually, through the last vintage. I don't know what vintage. that means, man. <laughs> wine number four. I've just written Brett question mark. Uh, there's a bit. Yeah, it's, it's definitely delicate. yeah on the nose. It's yeah, it's it's a suggestion. I, like I didn't sting it, I didn't notice it. It was very savoury. The perfect amount of bread. Yeah, to be honest. Uh, but knowing knowing where we are now in Hunter, I mean, it's probably Syrah. Yeah, of um, course, it's just savoury and lean. Mm. It's the, you know, yeah, you talk about this like kind of bipolar. Ripeness. Ripeness of like yeah. Syrah and Hunter. Yeah, it's got that briny, savory thing, but the acid's really peaky, it feels disjointed. Yeah. Um, I thought it was like a, I was in that, still in Mug River, and I thought it was like a young Bordeaux blend that wasn't like balanced. Nice. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it definitely feels Syrah. I really like this. I didn't mind it. I went with uh, six bottles and 40 bucks. Mm. This, along with the um, red herring uh, Riesling that turned out to be semi. Oh, uh, no. Vermentino. Vermentino, pardon me. These are the two that I bought dozens of. I really like this. Um, I wanted to pay $37 a bottle for it, and I wanted a dozen. I mean, uh, I think like. <laughs> Hunter Valley is the region that epitomizes like, why did you plant that there? Like everything that they mostly are specialized for is like, why did you plant that there? Sarara is the biggest one. Like, why did you plant that there? Semi on um, a, a great variety that's known for getting Botrytis. Yeah, exactly. Like, why did you plant it in the most humid, one of the most humid wine regions in the world? Uh, like for me, like, yeah, I, I wasn't into this very much. Uh, three bottles, 28 bucks. Barbera. Hey, Barbera. Uh, cool. I mean, the twingy, tweaky uh, acidity. acidity. Yep. That's, yeah. That screams Barbera. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Amazing. Cool. Mm. We've always liked the Breaking Ground. You just mentioned his Breaking Ground project. Yep. Always loved it. That is, like, that That really does push the agenda of Hunter Valley. Like, that poses a really good argument for it. Um, yeah. And we've tried his Syrah in this 
in this lineup before. Uh, it's a lot different. It's lighter. It's prettier. So this kind of feels. I don't like say his Barbera tastes like Syrah, and his Syrah tastes like Barbera. Yeah. And this Semillon tastes like dreams. <laughs> <laughs> dreams. Uh, one number five. Uh, one. I think I had one bottle. Yeah, I, 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 I felt like a wine I was going to enjoy. Like mm. it looks, feels like weight, alcohol. I felt like I was going to enjoy it, but I just didn't. I That's just dreamy. didn't. That, yeah. How, like I loved every aspect. In fact, I believe my commentary was I loved everything about this wine until until the finish. Yeah. And then it, the finish got more and more bitter. And I thought like grapefruit pithy. Mm. Like, What's going on here? We haven't, we're having a rough day, guys. I mean, we're, I'm not personally having a rough day, but we're having a rough day. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like having it. a good time. I quite like this one. Um, yeah, I see what you're talking about now to do a stringency thing, but at the same time, I was just like, I don't know, it's not too heavy, it's not too light, it sits in the middle, it's got a bit of juice to it. Uh, two bottles and 30 bucks. And half a dozen for 40. One bottle for like 36. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mount Henry, of course I like it. Mount Henry shit. <laughs> Classic blend. Dude. Classic blend. Yeah, Makes that's a that's a place, not an instruction. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, this. Let's just, let's just sit on that for a while. <laughs> uh, and this is uh, what they used to call Burgundy Traspino from the Hunter Valley. The weirdest fucking thing that's ever happened. Shiraz Why? Pinot Noir blend. <laughs> Shiraz Pinot Noir blend. That's, yeah, that's cool, man. I don't know what you, <laughs> it's got your about. name. Like yeah. literally, it has your name yeah, on it's it. My name literally all over it. Last one of the lineup. I for you. Quite, I quite liked this. I, I quite liked this. Yeah. I thought this I, was pretty classy Cabernet. I thought it was Cabernet too. It's definitely Cabernet. Yeah. Um, I, I like it more now. <laughs> I was a, a stringency. I think I'm not sure whether it was like like penalised because I just tried that wine and I really picked up on on like the bitterness there, and I just was like quite. Abrupt. Um, so I only ordered two bottles for like 45 bucks. Yeah, for me the overwhelming thing is just sort of that like a uh, green stemmy like agricultural thing that's going through your mouth mm -hmm. in the middle. I don't know if that's what you're talking about with the astringents. Again, like, I'm just identifying things that I taste in my mouth. I've got no idea what they actually mean. <laughs> but like for me, it was just that like I can tell that this is a whole bunch. So I'm like going. Do, do you ever have like 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 peel it like have mandarin right? Mm -hmm. And you have a little bit too much pith on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you kind of like swallow and chew that, and then and run right at the back, almost like a line as your tongue kind of goes down in your throat. Like you just feel it there. Yeah. That's. That's this astringency bitterness. Yeah, I'm picking up now aromatically this like old banana thing. Mm. Yeah, which is like, you know, like you've forgotten about a banana in like your fruit basket and you pull up all the other fruit that's on top of it and you get this like puff of like penicillin. It's like, ooh. <laughs> um, yeah, I said I wanted one bottle of it and I would pay $27. So I, this is my least favorite wine of the well, lineup. So the wine I spent the most on, I just Same. didn't want that many bottles of it, that's all. Yeah, I actually I thought this was pretty cool, and I I want going back now that banana thing. I'm now 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 it's in my head. I like it a lot less. <laughs> uh, but when I was tasting originally, I said twelve, and I said eighty-five. Wow, eighty-five bucks. We're all over the place with this one. How much was it? Uh, this is uh, Tempranillo. Tempranillo. That is, to be honest, that's one of the better Tempranillos I've tried out of Australia. Mm -hmm. um, because I generally am not a massive fan of this variety, um, but that's pretty cool. I agree wholeheartedly. I think that's a cracker tank. I just didn't pick it as tank. Yeah, I th that's the that's the thing about the Hunter Valley. Unless it's Semillon, who the fuck knows? Or you know, Chardonnay that's been very well oak handled, so I kind of screen Chardonnay. Who the fuck knows what it is? It's it's, it's a very red herring kind of like in a lineup mm. wine region. So wine of the lineup. Have you got any input in this? Have you got anything that you liked out of it? Come on. Well, oh, the paper yeah, wasp. Okay. I loved it. That yeah, was the I'm, only one yeah. that I bought twelve, and, I, and it was just I was so taken by it. It's just so well crafted. And to be honest, I've I've uh, had Usher Tinkler's wines before, mm -hmm. and I actually think they're underrated. I think he's an underrated winemaker. He does sneak under the radar. The, mm. Like I've tasted a bunch of his stuff as well. Um, but that's wild. I've like if you'd asked me, that was like akin to some of the great stuff we see out of Tasmania. Mm. I was like, wow, that's like, it's just dainty and elegant. It had me thinking, that was a linchpin wine that actually sent me to a different country. So that's gonna be my quote for 2024. I remember it was a couple of years ago that I was going, oh yeah, you can't tell the difference between uh, Piccadilly Valley and uh, Tasmanian Pinot Noir. It's gonna be, you can't tell the difference between a Tasmanian Chardonnay and one from the Hunter Valley, mate. Trust me, drink those wines. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming in. Yeah, we're hot. in. Uh, yeah, more yeah. than happy to make that one in the lineup for sure. Cool. Absolute cracker. All right. Well, until next week, don't go to New South Wales. Go to Maruchidor. They'll make <laughs> one. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs>